whenever we have carbonate as a negative ion in a compound it will always give out carbon dioxide gas so that you have to keep in your mind and already you all know the test for carbon dioxide gas but uh, in the beginning what is important is you will observe that it's a colorless gas as soon as you add dilute hydrochloric acid it's a colorless gas now other substances can also give colorless gas but carbon dioxide is not giving you a specific smell over here it's not giving you a smell so that is one indication you don't have any pungent type of smell over here so that's an indication that it could be carbon dioxide remember there are other gases also very similar so carbon dioxide is colorless and odorless no smell and no color so we know that it's carbon dioxide but still we are not very sure what do we do to be very sure of it we do the lime water test so we bubble the gas through lime water naturally uh, lime water we all know lime water is calcium hydroxide solution so as soon as we react it with it carbon dioxide react with calcium hydroxide solution and a white precipitate of calcium carbonate will be formed which will turn cloudy or milky this will confirm us that the negative ion is carbonate so that is for uh, the carbonate ion let's go to the next ion be very sure of all this test the positive ions not so difficult because color is there it's diff it's not difficult we use NaOH uh, maybe a little bit on aluminium and zinc may be a little difficult but the others are very very clear but still if you go to them revise it aluminium also becomes easy when you're doing the labs really it becomes easy because you see it sulfite and sulfate sulfite is SO3 2 minus and sulfate is SO4 2 minus their test is also different so don't get confused with sulfate and sulfite be sure to write this and remember sulfate and sulfide so to identify the sulfite ion we are going to add a small amount of dilute hydrochloric acid so here also remember we are going to add dilute sulfuric acid so iron is also there uh, let's sorry for uh, right calling the names because I want to take their attendance so I call their names call everybody's name so that's also important so sulfite ion we add a small amount of dilute sulfuric uh, hydrochloric acid now what happens is remember when you look at sulfite ions that gives you a picture of sulfur dioxide gas more closer to it than sulfate so now sul what happens is an acidic gas remember SO2 is an acidic gas is produced when the sulfite ions react with the acids hydrogen ions now one very important thing is difference between the gas of carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide gas this is also colorless gas but it has a pungent and acidic smell so that will tell you that it's a uh, sulfur dioxide gas it will have a pungent and acidic uh, it will be colorless it will be pungent and it will have an acidic smell so what do we do to identify sulfur dioxide gas we add uh, maybe a filter paper soaked in uh, potassium manganate and the potassium magnate changes from purple to colorless so once we add for sulfur dioxide we add a filter paper soaked with potassium manganate 7 and that filter paper which is purple will turn to colorless remember it will be purple in color and then it will turn to colorless so we know that sulfur dioxide gas is present you should also know the ionic equation also and how will you know that it's an acidic gas we'll know that it's an acidic gas by using a litmus solution or litmus paper it will turn uh, for acid blue will turn to red 
So that's how we know that it's an acidic gas. But for the confirmation of the gas, we do the test with uh, potassium manganate 7. Filter paper soaked with that and that will turn from purple to colorless. So that will tell us the presence of sulfur dioxide gas. So remember, for sulfite, what comes out? Sulfur dioxide gas comes out. When we add dilute hydrochloric acid. Don't get mixed up with them. Now let's go to the next one. Nitrate ion. So nitrate ion can be identified by heating the solution with aluminium powder and sodium hydroxide solution. Remember over here what we are doing, we are taking two substances and mixing it with nitrate. Nitrate ion, that means whatever compound containing nitrate in it, sodium nitrate or whatever it is. And we heat it by, we heat it with, heat the solution with aluminium powder and sodium hydroxide solution. How we can see aluminium nitrate is getting reduced to ammonia by addition of aluminium. And we also have sodium hydroxide. So that will ultimately lead to ammonia. Now the test for ammonia very similar it looks it smells it is colorless it smells it's also pungent smell just like uh, sulfur dioxide but it is not acidic smell so this is not acidic remember this this is not acidic so once we know it's not acidic we'll take red litmus paper or universal indicator paper and then what will happen is it will turn the indicator paper turns to blue so we know it is ammonia gas uh, how would you confirm that the gas given off is ammonia i told you just now we will add we will hold a damp and red litmus paper or universal indicator paper and the indicator paper turns to blue so we know ammonia how can you tell that this is a reduction reaction if you see nitrate and ammonia you will see uh, we all know what is reduction, three definition of reduction. One is loss of oxygen, gain of hydrogen and gain of electron. So electrons are also changed but we can evidently see oxygen, there is no oxygen, so loss of oxygen also. So we can say uh, aluminium reduces the nitrate ion to aluminium ion, uh, I, aluminium, uh, um, sorry, ammonia. So aluminium reduces the nitrate ion to ammonia. So, we know that this is ammonia gas by reacting it by using a litmus paper. So, that confirms the presence of nitrate. Now, the next one, sulfate. Remember, sulfate and sulfite are two different. Now, sulfate is SO4, 2 minus. And it's identified by adding a few drops. Sulfate, what we have to do? We have to add a few drops of barium chloride. But before adding barium chloride, we have to acidify it with a few drops of hydrochloric acid. So we put a few drops of hydrochloric acid and we uh, acidify it. So remember that. Don't confuse with sulfate and sulfite. Now, a white precipitate of barium sulfate is formed. What do we see? A white pre precipitate of barium sulfate is formed. So, uh, for sulfate, what we do is, how do we identify the sulfate? We add a few drops of barium chloride solution. The solution must be acidified first. So, before adding barium chloride, we have to acid acidify it by a few drops of hydrochloric acid. The white precipitate of barium sulfate forms. And you'll see uh, sodium sulfate plus barium chloride will give you barium sulfate plus NaCl. So you will see barium sulfate form, that means a white precipitate is formed. The ionic equation is SO4 2 minus plus Ba2 plus gives you BaSO4. So that's how we identify the negative ion sulfate ions. Remember, few drops of barium chloride, but before that we have to acidify it with few drops of hydrochloric acid. Let's go on. Now. Uh, remember this activity that we did, demonstration that we did. We have four test tubes and 
uh, first one, and actually we know what it is now because we did it yesterday. The first one was carbon di carbonate. The second one was sulfate. Third one, that is C, was nitrate, and D was hydroxide. So A naturally it's carbonate. So for carbonate we have to add HCl, and then it will give you a colorless, odorless gas. And to test that it's carbon dioxide, we test it with lime water. It will turn to milky. So that confirms the presence of carbon dioxide gas and carbonate ions. So we have done that. So confirmed. Next, we move on and do for uh, sulfate. Sulfate, we add HCl, a little bit acidified with and we we'll, uh, naturally both A and B will show that. But B, when we add barium chloride, it will form a precipitate. So we have confirmed that B is sulfate ion. Then the next one. Next one, let's take uh, NaOH uh, and uh, aluminium. NaOH and aluminium. So as soon as we put NaOH and aluminium, Aluminium powder heat it reduces nitrate to ammonia. So ammonia gas is evolved. How do we test for ammonia gas? We can put a litmus paper. Then uh, the red one will turn to blue. So if we put red, it will turn to blue. So that confirms the presence of ammonia gas. So we know what is C. C is nitrate. Now the last one. Last one, we use an indicator. We already know what A is. The others are green, so it doesn't make any sense. The D one uh, will turn to purple or blue. So we know it's a hydroxide, OH ions. So now we know all those and we have confirmed of it. So uh, our answers, we are very clear of the answers. Sorry, we are clear of the answers. Carbonate, sulfate, nitrate, and so now uh, identifying negative ions. That is, uh, remember one thing group seven. Group seven, we have fluorine, chlorine, bromine, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine. This is group seven. They are the halogens. They all have a valence electron of. 7 and valency of 1. That means they ha all have 7 electrons in the outermost orbit. That means they have a valence. Uh, so valency of valence electron are 7 and valency 1. Why? Because they can gain 1 electron uh, to become an ion, a negative ion like uh, F minus Cl minus. All right. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, Br minus. And it exists as molecules also. Like fluorine will F2, chlorine will Cl2. So they exist as molecules by single covalent bond. I hope you remember that. They form single covalent bond. So this is group 7. And they are known as halogens. But the ions are known as halides. Like fluoride, chloride, bromide iodide so these are known as halides this negative ions are known as halides so we call them as negative ions and they are halides all right so let's focus on this pay attention everybody so here halides are detected using silver nitrate solution so what are we using we are using silver nitrate solution silver nitrate solution silver nitrate is agno Three. Once more, I repeat. What is silver nitrate? AgNO3. So we detect the halides by using silver nitrate solution. The substance to be tested is first acidified with a small amount of nitric acid before adding the silver nitrate solution. So we again acidify it. It's convenient for the movement of particles. So we acidify it 
with nitric acid HNO3 so not HCl acid this is nitric acid HNO3 so this time we acidify the halides with HNO3 that's the first process now what we do is we add silver nitrate solution if halides are present a white precipitate not a white a precipitate will form this precipitate color depends on the nature of the halides the precipitate form are silver halides if it is fluorine it will be silver fluoride if it is chlorine it will be silver chloride uh, silver chloride if it is bromine it will be silver bromide so the precipitate formed are silver halides once more i repeat we take the halide and we first acidify it with small amount of nitric acid hno3 as soon as we add that we also add silver nitrate solution and then a white uh, sorry then a precipitate will form the color of the precipitate depends on the halide so for example if we have uh, halide chloride that is sodium chloride and we add small amount of dilute uh, oh it's not, not dilute but small amount of nitric acid and then we add silver nitrate solution as soon as we add that we'll see a precipitate will form the color of the precipitate over here will be white not any other color it will be white and other substance will be sodium nitrate nothing to do with that but the real ionic equation will be Cl minus plus Ag plus will give you AgCl. So AgCl is actually the color of the, it will give you the color of the precipitate and it is white. Can you, different silver halide precipitate can be distinguished by differing, by the differing color. So first test tube, we have chloride, which will appear to be white. It will appear to form white precipitate of silver chloride second test tube bromide will form a cream precipitate a cream colored a silver bromide precipitate and iodide will form a yellow iodide precipitate so by this color of the precipitate we can identify what that particular halide is please write this down 